What's up everyone, it's Logan with Chronic Cultivation. I know it's been a while, which you hear every video, let's be real. Uh, but I got a little update for you today. I had recorded one and as per usual, I just didn't get done with the editing and it kind of sat there and now it's two weeks, three weeks old, so I may as well just give you some more up-to-date information than release that video. Uh, behind me we have our 4x8 tent, which has our 3x6 living soil bed. Let's go ahead and just take a look at it. There have been challenges, setbacks, lots of learning going on here, which I would love to share with you guys, and I will in this kind of format, but not quite as it happens, just because it is a lot of work to whip out the camera and record with good commentary when I'm also trying to figure out what I'm looking at here. Oh, he fell right off of me. Pumpkin Oli. He likes to hop on my back when I lean in the tent here. So what we got going on is I've set up the Blue Mat automatic watering system with a gravity fed intake. So our water is up here, water level tries to stay at the top. Gosh dang it. This is what I uh, fear is I don't, if he puts one little hole in those hoses we're in trouble. <laughs> These main lines connect to the bucket, they feed down in a big loop around the perimeter of the bed. And that's, I guess you would call the supply line. Off of the supply line I have smaller tubing that connects to a center. You can kind of see the head right here, or to a sensor, rather. We typically refer to them as carrots in uh, the blue mat world, it sounds like, though I'm a novice blue mat worlder. This is my first go at it. It connects to a sensor here, 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 and here. Uh, this one and this one, opposite corners are nine inch maxi carrots, I think is what they refer to those longer sensors. And all that means is that it's measuring about nine inches down in the soil, the moisture content. Uh, whereas these other corners are the standard size, which I think is five inches, if I recall. Those are calibrated so that they are at a hanging drip, meaning, um, you know, the water is coming through this line, it comes to this sensor, which is kind of just like a valve that by turning the top of this, you close the valve and it pinches the tube, and then by unscrewing it counterclockwise, the it would open up and let water out. You calibrate it so that it's just barely stopped and it's not letting water out. And then as the soil dries out, the ceramic tip at the bottom of those sensors will kind of have a pulling action on them because the drying of the soil will try and pull moisture out of the carrot. Um, the carrot, that ceramic sensor at the bottom, there's a giant tube of water right above it and I believe that's why it kind of tries to suck through that ceramic piece, the water out of the tube. It won't actually be able to, or if it does, it goes back in, I'm not sure about that part. Um, but that it'll open and close based on if it's drying out or not, essentially. And my calibration will determine whether it keeps the soil moisture at 100 millibars or 50 millibars, which would be very wet. And right now, I'm just getting the hang of it. We've had it in here for about a month, uh, maybe only two weeks for the actual watering setup. It wasn't too long ago that I had that done. And it seems to be working as intended. I just haven't really found like how dry exactly does it get. I have this nine inch tensiometer, which measures in millibars the soil tension, water tension in the soil. It measures how water wet or dry it is in plain men's terms, layman's terms. You see we're reading 34, so that's pretty dang wet. Uh, ideally we're shooting for somewhere between 50 and 100, but really like 70 and 100 is what I'd like to see. Jeremy from Build a Soil, who I, I often watch and refer to, and this is kind of his method that I'm following largely, with input from many other YouTubers and content creators, but also just the internet. Uh, No-till and living soil is not unique to cannabis, don't get that mistaken. There's plenty of farms out there that are practicing no-till methodologies and uh, lots of great channels that, that explore that. But they keep theirs at about 60, I want to say, which is more wet than I do. I would do that. Um, it doesn't matter what I keep it at, it's just going to keep it at whatever the plants like. But I'm getting a feel for my calibration, you know. Uh, when it is dry enough and it starts to let water out, when does it stop letting water out? You know, how wet does it get before it, it returns back to drying out? That's what we're figuring out, and I think I know now. Uh, because recently, this actually drained the reservoir, which is a real issue. You don't want it to drain or you'll get air in your lines and it'll kind of screw up your calibration. My understanding though is it has to really dry the soil out so you've got some leeway, like if the tank goes dry for a couple hours, it's not good, but you could come over here and uh, fill the tank and everything should still be in check. It really depends on if the soil calls for water when the bucket is empty. I think that's where your calibration will get screwed up. Uh, but anyways, it, it let all the water out 
and this got down to about 26 so I know it gets pretty wet I mean 26 is really wet but that is also nine inches down which is really low it's kind of like the bottom half or lower of the whole bed itself don't remember exactly the height but it's probably like 16 inches tall um, we'll see if that's too wet I'm gonna need plants in here to really determine that plants with deep roots not like my cover crop here which probably have shallow roots though I'm not certain um, yeah we're just keeping an eye on that the plan here as far as it relates to cannabis is that we're gonna have one mother plant I've got Bahama berry seeds from Soulfire Gardens. I'm going to grow that plant out in a pot. I might set the pot on top of the bed, but I don't plan on putting them in the bed until I have clones. And then I'm not sure if I'll do like four in each to keep it under the eight limit, or if I'll do like a sea of green with just a bunch of clones and justify it as, oh, they all come from the same plant. You know, it's like one plant just spread out a little bit. <laughs> I'm not sure yet, but it's coming along. I've had actually a lot of trouble germinating my my uh, cannabis seeds, which is a little embarrassing, being that I've done it now for five years and I don't consider myself a newbie. While I don't consider myself a newbie, I'm always trying new things and lots of this setup is new to me. So I am a newbie in that sense. What I've done is I've germinated the paper towel method, just like you've seen me do in the past. And if you're not familiar with that, you soak the seed in water for 16, 24 hours. Then it goes to a paper towel. Once you see the tap root, then it goes into something like this or a red solo cup basically just somewhere for your seedling to get just enough light but not too much what's been happening is I've been getting a lot of dampening off I've got some great pictures I could show but I can't while I'm recording live and I'm gonna post this without editing so that it actually gets out to you guys I don't want you to think I'm gone because I'm not I'm, every day I'm in here and I'm thinking about it and making progress uh, just like I'm sure you guys are you know how it goes a lot of dampening off and I expect that is because I've added compost tea to this when I first put it in. I've added lots of micro binoculants. I had root wise in my compost tea but also probably some watering that I did for the cover crop. I've kind of gone crazy with the add diversity of microbes which is going to be your protozoa, your bacteria, your fungi. I know there's quite a few of them. Um, nematodes might be a microbe. I'm not sure if they are. But all the beneficial organisms in there. And the whole idea behind living soil is you give them a good environment and they will treat your plants right. They will help your plants out and your plants will feed them and it'll just all be nice and working together. Um, but I think because of that and also because my heater turns off after 24 hours so sometimes I'll wake up in the morning and it'll be like 60 degrees in here. The fungi that cause dampening off and that's what causes dampening off is fungal pathogens in particular. They thrive in cool environments and damp environments. I do have a heating tray under there, so I don't actually know if this is a valid excuse, but I'm, I'm wondering if when my heater turned off and it was getting to be 60 degrees in the mornings, but also very high humidity in that dome, if I just made the perfect environment for the dampening off fungus to take over and kill my stuff. Now the first seed I did, I had three feminized seeds. The first one I did with a red solo cup just sitting right there, and I thought the issue was fungus gnats because I had quite a lot of fungus gnats in here. Some residual from my last grow, some that just came with the new soil, which is typical. I've added a lot of mosquito bits. I've gone from using a little bit of mosquito bits to uh, liberally applying to every body of water. Now I'm trying not to do it every time. I don't want to overdo it. It seems like too much of anything would be a bad thing, especially a biologically active thing like mosquito bits. Um, but I'm certain that how much I've been using before that was not enough because I could just not handle, like I couldn't get it under control even with the sticky traps and nematodes, which I also applied. Since putting a lot in a sprayer, letting it sit for the proper amount of time and then spraying it, I've noticed the population is 100% down. Um, it is working. There are still some here and there, and that could be from other bodies of water. You can see my basement sometimes. It's a little crazy down here. Um, and that's why I'm trying to add it to other bodies of water, too. If it's going to be sitting, it should have some mosquito bits. Um, so what we're going to do is because it's a pathogen, a fungal pathogen that's causing the issue, and I'm giving it the perfect environment to thrive, I do have some open questions like, why well, wouldn't have killed all my cover crop? Well, some of them didn't germinate. Um, also, was I keeping it too wet? Because typically overwatering is also what people think of as the cause for dampening off less so than fungal organism. I very very well could have been adding too much water. I basically just soak the build a soil 3.0 soil 
in the seedling tray um, and then plant the seed. Maybe I should have been letting it dry out a day or two so it was just kind of moist, like a field capacity level. That makes sense to me. Uh, but instead, what I'm going to do this time, I have a seed soaking right now, I'm going to try some cocoa choir. Just like normal, I'll put it in some water, squeeze it out till it's at that perfect field capacity level of moisture, plant my seed in there. That way it's a nice inert medium. There should not be pathogens in there like fungal things that could take over. And I just need the seed to get about yay high. If it breaches the surface, it gets its first true leaves or cotyledons or both, they're two different things. Um, then it's kind of past the point of having to worry about that dampening off. It could still happen, and it happens at the base of the stem a lot, whereas I was having it happen at the, the end of the root, which could be root rot, and dampening off fungi can cause root rot. Gosh, dang it, look at this boy. Um, but I'm going to do that, and in the future I'll probably use like a seed starting mix, because I read about a lot of gardeners who just also have problems with dampening off. Whether we're adding too much water, whether there's too much life in the soil and it's getting too cold, um, all those things... We won't have to worry about it if we use cocoa choir. You pretty much can't overwater cocoa choir, though it is much easier to underwater. And you also don't have any life in it or nutrients, but I need neither for a seedling because it contains uh, all the nutrients it needs in its... What do they call that? Um, shoot, I forget the name of it, but basically within the seed it has enough energy for about 10 to 14 days, uh, as long as you give it some light once it sprouts. So that's where we're at guys, we got, and you notice, can you tell where my, my blue soak lines are, huh, <laughs> based on where this cover crop is germinating? Clearly it doesn't distribute the moisture super well amongst the topsoil, uh, so I will come in here with a sprayer and spray in between them probably. I'm going to do that today for sure, but long term that's something I'll have to consider where I might have to apply just for like the top few inches. or. Maybe once I get it all nice and evenly moisturized and not just hot spots of moisture based on where my tubing is, and that's what it is, it's like a tube that the water comes out of right there. Uh, maybe it'll retain the moisture evenly once I have some cover crop and mulch covering it like I do now. I expect that's more likely the case because you shouldn't have to come in here and do more uh, watering than just letting the, the blue mats go because that's the idea. I want to just keep that reservoir full pretty much be hands off. Uh, dial my settings. I'll show you too. I don't trust this boy not to mess with something. Come on pumpkin. Come on buddy. Get out of there. No chance. He loves it in there. I'll get him when we're done. Uh, but I got my little control panel over here. I think I've shown you guys before. Let's flash it. It's all falling apart because I use tape kind of just to give me guidelines of where I want it. But you can see you got the humidity probe, temperature probe. I think those might be flipped. You can see if that is the temperature probe, which it is, it's pretty cold. I think that's because I've just had the door open though. It does a good job keeping it warmer. Um, I don't actually set the humidity and temperature here, but this is where I monitor it. Otherwise I'd come in here and I'd flip these, you know, you'd change the settings here. I'm going to grab him, get him out of here. Uh, look forward to some updates in the future. Once this new seed gets uh, germinated and starts growing you'll be seeing more frequent updates because I'll actually have plants to show you right now the last month it's really just been reset clean stuff plan think about spring outdoor gardening which I'll share with you guys a little bit of if you're interested in that um, oh look at that naughty you stop it what a naughty boy come on thank you sheesh all right that's it for me guys stay good stay well like, subscribe, comment, do all that stuff. But I'll talk to you later. Take it easy. Bye.